Welcome to the video on section 5, which is used inequalities in a triangle. There are two objectives for today's video. The first one is to be able to list angles and sides in a triangle from the smallest to the biggest. The second one is to determine the possible side lengths for the third side of a triangle. We're going to jump right in with the theorem. The smallest angle in a triangle is across from the smallest side. The largest angle is across from the largest side. So drawing yourself an example, let's just come up with three angle measures. Let's say one angle is 40, one angle is 60, that would make the last angle 80, because remember they're all going to sum to 180. Now let's mark the, the vertices A, B, and C. Okay, now the angles. The smallest angle is angle B, the medium angle is angle A, and the largest is angle C. So this is smallest to biggest. So that's not new. Well, what we can determine from here is which sides are smallest and largest. Now, if B is the smallest angle, the side across is going to be the smallest side. So AC would be the smallest side. Angle A is the medium side, so BC is the medium side. Angle C is the largest, so AB is going to be the largest. That's all this theorem says. So let's look at an example. Example one, the one on the left, it says list the sides and angles from largest to smallest. So we're given this information here. I'm going to start by marking that information on the figure. DE is 4.02, FD is 4.42, and EF is 4.17. Okay, so I need to list the sides from largest to smallest and the angles. Okay, so the largest side is DF at 4.42, EF is in the middle, and then the smallest side is DE. That should have been easy. Angles are what's new. Now, the biggest side is across from the biggest angle. That means angle E is the largest. The medium side is across from the medium angle, so angle D is the medium angle. 4.02 is the smallest, so then angle F will be the smallest angle. That's it. Right now, I would like you to pause the video and try the next example on your own, please. Come back when you are finished. Okay, so first thing that you should have done is mark your angles. Angle ABC, so ABC, this angle here, is 69.21 degrees. Angle BCA, right here, is 39.39 degrees. Okay, so we need to list our sides and angles from smallest to largest. If we start with angles, since that's what we have, we run into the problem in that we're missing an angle. We don't know all of the angle measures. So the first thing that you should have done is found that last angle. So if you take 180 and you subtract 69.21 and you subtract 39.39, you find this last angle to be 71.4 degrees. Okay, now my biggest angle is angle A, my medium angle is angle B, and my smallest angle is angle C. Now I can do the sides. If angle A is the biggest, that tells me that BC will be the biggest side. If angle B is the medium side, then across from that AC is the medium side. If angle C is the smallest angle, across from that, A, B will be the smallest side. So hopefully that went well for you. You need to make sure that you find that third angle. If you don't find the third angle, then you're not going to receive full credit for the question. So please make sure you know all of the angles before you attempt to do the problem. So hopefully that went well for you. That's the first part of this section. second part of this section involves the triangle inequality theorem. Triangle inequality theorem, right here, says that the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle is greater than the length of the third side. So looking at example two, it says, is it possible to form a triangle with side lengths of 6, 7, and 11? So we are told any two sides have to be greater than the third, the sum. So if I take 6 and 7, that has to be greater than 11. If I take 6 at 11, that has to be greater than my third side of 7. And if I take 7 at 11, that has to be greater than my third side of 6. 
So I end up with 13 is greater than 11, which is true. 17, which is greater than 7, which is true. And 18, which is greater than 6, which is true. So yes, these sides form a triangle. Right now, you pause and try example three on your own, please. Okay, problem three should have been similar. If you take any two sides and add them together, they should be greater than the third side. So three add six should be greater than nine. Three add nine should be greater than six. And six add nine should be greater than three. Simplifying, I get nine is greater than nine. Right now, you can stop right away. That is not true. So, no, these sides do not form a triangle. Okay, so all three inequalities have to be true in order to form a triangle. As soon as one does not hold true, then the triangle does not exist. Okay, so this is the first way that you're going to find the triangle inequality theorem. The next type of example, I'm going to give you two sides, and you're going to have to find the possible values for the third side. So we'll flip the page so we can try a problem like that. Okay, so example four, it says a triangle has one side length of 12 and another of 8. Describe the possible lengths of the third side. Okay, so I have sides of 12, 8, and then my third side I'm going to call x. Now I know any two sides added together have to be greater than the third. So 12 add 8 has to be greater than x. 12 add x has to be greater than 8, and then 8 add x has to be greater than 12. Simplifying, I get 20 is greater than x, x is greater than negative 4, and x is greater than 4. Okay, we don't need three inequalities, though. So we need, you're always going to end up with three, and there's always going to be one that you don't use. Here, you can probably guess that it's the negative 4 because the value is negative. That's not always going to be the case, though. So what I want you to do is graph all of these inequalities. So I'm going to have a negative 4, I'm going to have a 4, and I'm going to have a 20. x is less than 20 is all of that. x is greater than negative 4 is all of that. And then x is greater than 4 is all of this. So what you're looking for is where all three overlap, which hopefully you should notice is between 4 and 20. So that tells you that your third side is between 4 and 20. It can't be exactly 4 and it can't be exactly 20. It has to be a little bit bigger than 4 at least and a little bit less than 20. Okay, so right now, I would like you to pause and do the fifth example on your own, please. Come back when you are finished. Okay, so for this example, I'm going to tell you that you should have gotten that your third side is between 6 and 24. You should have ended up with a number line that had negative 6, 6, and 24 on it. You would have had this, this, and that. So the only overlap would have been between 6 and 24. If you didn't get that, then you did something wrong. You need to go back and fix your mistake. If you did get that right, then good job and look at the last example. So that's the end of this video. The video talked about the triangle inequality theorem. And then the first theorem talked about how to list the sides and angles from largest to smallest. So remember, the smallest angles are located across from the smallest sides. And then we talked about the triangle inequality theorem, which said the sum of any two sides is always greater than the third side. So here is your last objective example to do on your own, please. When you come to class tomorrow, I'm going to be making sure that you have this problem done with the correct work. If you do not have the correct work, you will not receive credit. Good luck, and I will see you tomorrow.